Cedar Point is a place that we used to die to go to because of the coaster collection at the park. But in 2019, the park would add the $99 gold pass for the 150th celebration. The question many people ask, is Cedar Point even worth it anymore? I'll answer that question by diving into the crowds, wait times, food choices, and rides so you can decide for yourself. We will also be looking at the cost in this video so you know what to expect before planning a trip to Cedar Point. Just note, the opinions I express in this video are just personal experiences from myself and our team. Please don't take them personally. Also, if you could do me a favor and please subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already and hit that like button if you like the video. Let's go ahead and begin. So in 2019, Cedar Point would add the gold pass, the $99 gold pass as another option to the park. This would open up a lot of different benefits to include early entry. And also if you renewed your platinum pass or other season passes, gold pass, you did receive a free day to use the fast lane. And I remember there were long lines during haunt in the 2019 season because of that pass. Now, what you're looking at now is the 2022 gold pass and platinum pass, but this shows all the benefits in there and it includes early entry, free parking, resort discounts and so forth. And obviously platinum is better still than gold, but this was still a good deal for families that wanted to save a quick buck. And obviously you don't want to continuously not be able to go to the water park and not be able to get free parking or discounts. So of course people are gonna jump on this opportunity and plus it's $99. Do I think that that cost was really undervalued? Yes. Reason being is you have tons of great coasters and rides at this park and the experiences of this park. And I think at the minimum, a gold pass should be $150 minimum just because of what you're getting at Cedar Point. I also think that the Platinum Pass is undervalued as well. Do I think Fastlane Plus is undervalued? Well, I used to. On Saturdays and Sundays, I thought it was a great deal, but obviously with this season, in the 2021 season, they were pricing it sometimes at $249 on really busy days. And from what a lot of people told me was that the lines were one to two hours on some days for like Steel Vengeance and Maverick. And then even coasters that normally weren't busy were busy. And it seemed like the other line, the regular line was pushing through around the same speed some days as the fast lane. They obviously fixed that issue, but still the fast lane is a very expensive add-on. Unless you get the all season, but that all season uh, could cost you a pretty penny as well. Uh, but it could definitely be worth it because obviously if you live close to the park, you could just pop in whenever you feel like it and ride whatever you want and then leave. But the goal pass, was obviously added in 2019. So when 2020 rolled around, COVID was going on and obviously the state of Ohio delayed operations and opening for their parks and coasters and other things that year. So when Cedar Point finally did open last summer, they had to have an access pass for a lot of their coasters and cap attendance. And they thought that the best thing to do would be to have these access passes in order to ride certain popular roller coasters. That turned out to be a total disaster last summer Obviously, people were only able to ride two or three coasters. Zach from our team actually went there last year and he experienced what he said was the worst day he ever experienced at the park. This is footage from 2019, so don't let it confuse you. This is not the park's current crowd count. Uh, I'll show that here in a little bit. But he said it was one of the worst experiences that he ever had just due to the fact that he was not able to ride what he normally wanted to ride. He said he would rather just wait it in line and rode the rides. Uh, a lot of people ran into this experience where they got an access pass for one, the line was longer, and they had an access pass for another, and then they would miss their time slot and not be able to ride that coaster. So a lot of people were experiencing really bad experiences last summer. I know Cedar Point was attempting to do new things. Also, the gold pass from last summer and platinum pass was extended out through the 2021 season. So a lot of people decided to wait it out. Now, the park was still busy last summer, but not as busy as what we would see in 2021. In 2021, as more people were getting vaccinated and the virus was kind of, you know, going down a little bit, and obviously things were opening up fully back up and the attendance cap was not there, Cedar Point would open up during its normal operating time. And 
they ended up experiencing some of the highest crowds uh, that they've ever experienced before. Now, obviously this was due to a lot of families delaying their trips to a lot of different parks across the country. Orlando actually experienced that where I live at currently. And a lot of people delayed a lot of their trips from 2020 and pushed them to 2021. Then if you added in that, you had a lot of different people getting stimuluses. So a lot of people probably saved that. Adding to a lot of people being able to do a lot of local visiting to a lot of local parks or regional parks. Also added that in the equation, there wasn't a lot of international traveling, so people weren't traveling overseas. So there was a lot of staycations or local vacations going on in 2021, adding to huge crowds and horrible experiences. Uh, but I wouldn't blame Cedar Point for that. You can't predict that. And then also they had the staffing issues. Uh, they were offering more an hour to get more people in to staff it because they weren't able to utilize the international worker program that they used in prior years so uh, that added a lot of issues where rides weren't open at certain times or on certain days because of staffing issues at the park but like i said that wasn't an issue that cedar point could avoid so i would definitely just brush that aside for 2020 to 2021 and realize that it was outside of cedar point's control but i will give you some pointers if you plan on visiting cedar point so the first pointer obviously is to plan way ahead expect the unexpected because crowds can generate at any time now it's less likely to happen during the week so if you were to visit cedar point for your first time i would definitely do it during the week and not on the weekend or back when school's in session i would avoid halloween haunt uh just because it gets really busy unless you're able to afford afford skipping the haunted houses or if you're closer to the park, just because the crowds are really ridiculous. I think they actually, in 2019, experienced it where they actually had to stop allowing people back into the parking lot because it was that busy. And then the rumors came about where people said they were blaming it basically on the gold pass, but Halloween Haunt's always that busy. But anyways, I would definitely recommend making it like a two to three to four day trip. If you're just planning on doing the park and not the water park, two to three days or three to four if you plan on doing the water park. There's just so many rides and attractions to see here. And if you rush through it, you're not gonna have a good experience. I learned that in 2019 when I last went, that if you spend more time at this park, you'll experience a lot better things because you'll take your time. You'll be able to see a lot more. There's a lot to see at Cedar Point. They have a lot of rides and attractions. So, not only the coasters are going to take up a day alone or two days, but you also have the other rides and attractions as well. Food costs. I would definitely plan to get the all day food plan if you plan on going. I would not just pay per meal just because it adds up really fast. If you get the all day meal plan, you get to eat every 90 minutes and they might have changed that. Um, it's usually every hour and a half to two hours. And usually all the restaurants are included in this. And they show you what dishes you could actually get off the pass. It's definitely well worth it. I get it every time I go to any Cedar Fair Park. And I definitely get my money's worth out of it. And then also the all-day drink plan. And I would get the disposable cups so you could grab a drink before you hit the line and stay hydrated. Uh, because obviously in the summer, it does get hot along Lake Erie. As for lodging, if you can afford to stay on property or in sandusky go ahead and do so but just to be forewarned that sandusky does get really expensive and there's not a whole lot of good hotel options in sandusky ohio in my personal experience and opinion and then also if you wanted to stay on property just be prepared to pay a pretty penny for that because obviously if you're going to stay on property you're going to pay a lot more out of the pocket and you can actually go on the website to view these costs if you wanted to do so. You could also plan a trip ahead of time and use your discount on your, like if you have a season pass or so forth, and you could actually pay in deposits until the basically the weekend of your trip. I highly recommend that, spreading that out if you're able to do that, just because it'll make your experience a lot better. And obviously it includes early entry. You'll have a little more experiences with it. And I think some of them actually do include fast lane or they used to. I'm pretty sure they'll bring that back in 2022 if they did not do that in 2021. 
Um, for the lodging options, if I'm not able to afford to stay on property, usually stay at campgrounds. There's a lot of good campgrounds in the area. Or I try to stay closer to Toledo or Cleveland just because those two cities aren't that far away from the park. And it's not that hard to drive into off the uh, toll road into Cedar Point from there. But depending on your budget, uh, definitely plan ahead. Definitely plan way ahead. Don't be forced to stay around that area if you can't afford it. It's okay to venture out a little bit and drive a little bit. It's not gonna really ruin your experience. Trust me, the, a lot of those hotels, read the reviews because those reviews are not lying. They're telling the truth on a lot of those hotels in the area. Um, downtown Sandusky has a lot of good stuff as well. There's just a lot to do around in and around Cedar Point. And it, maybe even spend a day at the beach if you're able to, because it sits right on Lake Erie. It's great. Or And also go visit Put in the Bay, which is not too far away from the park either. So in conclusion, do I think that Cedar Point is worth going to still? Yes. I would not hold 2020 and 2021 against the park. Staffing issues with COVID, with everything going on in the world. A lot of parks were experiencing a lot of different issues and a lot of different problems. I think Cedar Point's going to have it fixed. We don't know what 2022 is going to bring yet, but it's one of my favorite places to go visit. The only reason I didn't go in 2020 and 2021 is because I know what's going on with the park and how crowded it is. And it's not that I don't want to go back to Cedar Point. It's not that. I want to go when I'm able to experience it in a way that I was able to experience it before. So it depends on what you want to do, but you plan out your day, go to the website, plan out what rides you want to ride. I definitely highly recommend riding all the coasters there. They have a great coaster lineup, great flat ride lineup. The food's great there. The drinks are great there. And obviously it is worth visiting. It sits right on a picturesque Lake Erie. The coasters have the skyline from a distance off of the lake. You can rent a boat on the lake and go next to the actual park. Uh, the park is amazing and always will be amazing. And I'm pretty sure Cedar Fair is going to keep it great for years to come. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Is Cedar Point still worth visiting? And please give the video a like if you like the video. And subscribe to our channels for future videos that will come out for Midwest Coaster fans. And until next time, this is Chris signing off from Midwest Coaster fans. Thanks again for watching.